Hey, what's going on, miners? Mining King here. Today, we're going to be checking out the new Chlor Fleet feature. So let's get right into it. So we're going to be taking a look at Chlor Fleet, which is one of their newest features they've added to Chlor.ai, which is actually really, really cool. So They've added this feature to mass onboard rigs, and you're able to do this through um, HiveOS, which is really, really cool because we're able to, if you guys are mining, but you also maybe want to get into some AI, depending upon, you know, obviously your rig configurations, you guys may be able to also list your rigs on the platform while it's mining and do some AI as well. So... So how it works is, is you're going to set a multiplier for your mining. Like you want to make 2x, 1.5x, 4x, whatever you want to make on top of your mining profits, right? Depending upon what you're mining, because maybe you're mining, you know, negatively, right, in revenue. So maybe you want like a 4x multiplier, but you set a multiplier. And when a job comes your way and it meets these requirements, it will then turn you off from mining and then have you do AI workloads, right? And then when the workload is over, you'll go, you'll go back to mining. So it's actually really, really cool. It's something that's almost like auto profit switching when it comes to doing mining and AI in the background, right? So let's go ahead and let's get into the tutorial of how to actually get this done. All right, guys, so we're over here at the Hive OS screen right now. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to, um, is we need to be on the latest kernel, which is 6.1.0, um, and it's gonna be number 90. And you can also do a, if you're on an older version, you can do a, ha a Hive dash replace space dash dash list and upgrade that way as well. I'll be making a Google Doc that you guys can follow along and, you know, kind of like copy and paste some of the stuff in there. But the first step we're going to do is once you're on this kernel, uh, is you're going to, you're going to upgrade the hive up to the latest thing here to make sure all of our miners and stuff like that are up to date, right? As far as possible. So we're going to run that. It's going to upgrade and then it's going to reboot. And then once it reboots, then we'll get into um, doing the NVIDIA drivers and upgrading, you know, the operating system itself. All right. So now that this thing has booted a few seconds ago, let's go ahead and let's get into our hive shell and let's start doing some of the commands we're going to need to do in order to be able to, um, you know, start doing the Chlor fleet. So once you're in the shell, the first thing that we're going to do is going to be update our NVIDIA drivers with NVIDIA driver or NVIDIA dash driver dash update dash dash list. And this is going to help break out all the different, you know, versions we can use. But on, on the bottom, you can see what version we're on is 535.171.0.4. And the stable version is 550.120, which is also the latest CUDA, which is also what we're going to want to use for compute jobs, right? So all we need to do is just put in 550.120 and away she's going to go. She's going to download and she's going to start, you know, getting all the latest and greatest NVIDIA stuff. Okay, so once you're at this screen here and it has the done and driver installation is, success is successful, let's go ahead, let's go over to our Hive OS. And let's go ahead and, well, so let's go ahead and let's head back to in the Hive OS here and let's confirm this. So we'll hit the refresh screen and you can see here that we're on 550.120. So that means that our installation was good. So the next thing we need to do is, is we actually need to come over here. So the next step is going to be coming over to Clore. Now you are going to have to make an account and I'm not going to take you through a guide to make an account because I think everybody nowadays knows how to make accounts with setting up an email and a username and password and all that stuff. That's really basic. That's exactly what you need to do here. But once you make an account for, for hosting, you're going to come over to Marketplace and then you're going to click My Servers. And you can see I have some stuff rented here already, but we're doing a new one, right? So we need to click Mass Onboard. And then they have this really nice article post right here, which I'll also leave linked down in the description. 
And this way, it, it kind of breaks down how everything works. But I'm going to give you the breakdown, too. So maybe if you don't understand how everything's stated here, that I can give you a better understanding, right? But this is some good documentation if you guys want it. So feel free to give that a read. Um, so we're going to want HiveOS, mining profitability based. Now, what it is, is it's based on a multiplier, which means that it's going to be like, Currently, right now, it's set up for 1.8 times for demand price and 1.4 times of for the spot price. Now, what that means is is it's 1.8 times the revenue that you're generating currently with whatever you're mining. Now, currently, Aleo isn't supported with mining profitability based, but you can do static with Aleo. So maybe I'll do a future video on how to do that with Aleo. But currently right now, Aleo isn't natively supported in Hive. So the stats aren't actively able to be tracked as well. So currently right now, you can't use Aleo for mining profitability based, but you can set things statically. And what I mean by that is, is you come over here and you hit calculate by USD, you can set like actual pricing of like, okay, I want if, I want the minimum to be at least $5 for the spot and the bid before I want my miner to come online. So you can do things like that as well, right? Um, but we're going to do the mining profitability based. And where they pull this information from is actually going to be from hashrate.no. And it's, it's based on revenue, not profit, right? So this is important. So I'm doing zealous for this demonstration. So you can see here that currently the Zella's revenue is 66 cents. So that's really low, um, at least like in the terms of like, you know, AI and stuff. So you would be 1.8 times 66 cents would be the price of where you would set for your AI. Now you can adjust this like I'm going to put that I want a 4x on this but that just means it's going to be what it's only going to be two dollars and 64 cents that's not good enough for me so to me i'm going to set a spot price of eight right so this is going to put me around the five dollar and 20 cent mark which is pretty good for me for a 4090 right now this is going to be the maximum length for the duration of the rent that the customer can do at any given time now, I usually find 30 days is a good spot. Now, once you kind of get the hang of this and you build certain machines and you get comfortable with your pricing, you know, I find that people more often will rent machines that have very long rental periods. And what I mean by that is, is, you know, two to three months, not just like a week or a day or whatever, right? But for this demonstration, we're going to do 30 days and we'll do 720 hours and then we're going to go over these next three options, right? So these next three options is going to be, the first one's going to be the override specifics on each machine reboot or change configuration, okay? What this means is, is there's two things going on here. Number one, if you, if, you, if you do not tick this box, if you leave it unchecked, that means that every time you want to change your multiplier, which is essentially changing your price, you're going to have to essentially make another flight sheet on a, an, and authentication token, okay? So it's going to be a, a huge pain in the butt if you do this. You can do this, so but to me, it's like, okay, I want to check this box. So this way, I can change the, um, the multiplier on the actual core, uh, you know, you know, Core AI, you know, uh, website here, right? This way I don't have to like go in and make new flight sheets every time I want to change my price, right? That's kind of a pain in the butt, but you could do either which way. It doesn't matter. So the next one is going to be the second tick is if you want to keep the overclocks for your GPU to carry over to your AI workloads. And what this is, this is going to do two things. Okay. So number one, is if you check this box like this, that means that you're going to enable your, your overclocks to carry over to your AI compute. The bad part is, is if you've heavily uh, underclocked your GPU, you're going to be what's called in a efficiency market. Essentially, it's gonna be a market for miners, right? So you're not gonna be getting a lot of AI workloads. 
So keep that in mind when you're doing these kinds of things. But there will be a separate market for efficiency, right? So it'll be miners or people looking to mine to rent from you. But you can always charge more than what the coin is currently revenueing because maybe these people don't have the infrastructure or the GPUs or the power rate or whatever. So they might be willing to pay a 25 45% premium on top of the current revenue because they just don't have the hardware, right? So... Um, so that's the second box. I leave this unchecked because I have a 4090 and I want the customer to have the full capabilities of the card for AI workloads, right? The next thing is this third box is going to be whether or not that this, uh, if Chlor AI installs and it runs as a background service, right? So this means that even if you change the flight sheet or did something that no matter what you did, that Chlor AI will even run when, when it's disabled on the flight sheet, right? So this way your Chlor machine is essentially always running, right? Now, this is what's gonna happen though, is like if, if, if things, be, you know, if, you if you're using the profitability based one, you, you don't really need this right here. You can, you can go without this option, right? Because obviously you're gonna be using a flight sheet because we're using mining profitability based. Now, the next thing is, is we're going to need two sections to start this flight sheet. You're going to need to copy this HiveOS flight sheet, uh, and you're going to just copy it, and you're going to go over to your farm, and then we're going to go over to flight sheets, and then we're going to click clipboard and then paste, right? Okay, that's number one. Number two is, is this, there's a, an authentication token here. It's very important to never share or show this authentication token whatsoever because people could get into your HiveOS farm, screw things up. They can like do all kinds of stuff to your, it's like if you want nefarious stuff, then just give away this token to somebody. So do not share this token ever under any circumstances, okay? Nobody should ever ask for it or need it, right? So we're going to then, now once you've set up the actual Chlor hosting right here, okay? The next thing we're going to do is we're going to actually add our miner now. Now we're going to go to Zealous. I'm going to use the web wallet. We'll just do hero miners. Uh, and then we're going to go to Regal Miner. Now the main reason that Aleo can't work is, is because you can't have the same miner twice. Aleo is a custom miner. You can't have two custom miners. But there is a way to do it, and I'll do another video sometime within the next week or so. And I'll show you guys how to do it. So I'm going to paste in my overclocks for my Zealous that I want to use. Um, we'll just go like that. And then we're going to do click create flight sheet. All right. We're going to go back to our worker. And then we're going to make sure that we're, um, we're going to do what's called MOTD watch in our shell in a box, right? This way we could see everything that's gonna be going on here, right? So your screen will change to this once you hit enter. We're going to click on our, our flight sheet here. We're going to do the little rocket ship and then it's going to take off. So once it loads everything up here, we're gonna start seeing it's doing all this magic here. And you're gonna see all these dependencies start to load. So right now it's downloading and installing the Regal Miner, and now it's downloading and installing all of the Chlor repository stuff that we need to be able to uh, do all of our workloads and things like that. Okay, so I wanted to do this because some of the installs will go through directly just fine, but I wanted to show this if it's not working correctly. So you can see I'm getting some repository errors here. And you can see that there's some Docker errors going on. Okay, so we're gonna do what's called a control C and we're going to stop everything. Okay, we're just gonna get out of MOTD watch. We're going to do a sudo app install GPG and she should start moving. Now we're seeing it starting to install. It's starting to depill the dependencies. You can see Docker is, is uninstalling, is installing itself right now and it's going through the entire install right now. So another way to watch this is we could do minor. And now we can actually see it physically pulling everything. So right now it's doing a git pull and it's downloading the latest Chlor images and stuff like that. So 
Um, you're going to have to wait a few minutes for this thing to start downloading and installing all of the Clore, the, the GitHub repositories and things like that. It's going to take like 10 minutes or so, depending upon your machine. If it's like an Octo Miner with a very low end CPU, it's probably going to take you a little while. So maybe go get a coffee, go get something to drink, come back, see where it is. So we're here at the end of the finish line here. And you'll get this Clore hosting system running. So this means that the system is now just starting to start up and do its thing. So let's go ahead and let's go over to our Clore here. And you can see I haven't refreshed the page yet. Let's see if it's popped up yet. And let's go ahead and let's see if we did. We did. We did get a new rig. And it's this, it's this rig random number here with your Hive OS here. So let's go in here. Now... This ID number here, it's very important that if you ever have any problems and need to do a fresh install, that you need to delete this rig from your farm. Because if you don't, it's always going to keep populating this spot right here in Clore, and it could give you a little bit of headaches here. So you would, if you needed, if you had some really bad problems, you would need to come down here to the, um, you know, all the way down to the advanced settings and then remove the worker right? That would be essentially what you need to do if you are having problems with Clore because it'll keep gener it'll keep using the same rig ID and it'll keep saying that Clore is already on the system and it's going to just cause you a bunch of problems. So that's what I've kind of ran into. I've been doing some testing and these are just some of the things that I do when I have problems. Most times people just do the, the install command and it works. And if you, if you have problems like I did and you need to do the pseudo app install GPG and the upgrade, then sometimes you got to do that. So, um, but it, it does work. So right now, currently it is online. It's went from offline to online now. And now the system is just now starting up. So it's starting to do like benchmarking and getting all the stuff it needs to be able to run right now, because currently right now our backend's not updated. So we need to wait patiently until it says that it's in working condition or, or that it's working, right? So this way that it's fully operational and then this way we can start the rental process. All right, guys. So now that the rig has been successfully in, is in the working properly condition and in the back end is fully up to date, this thing is now ready to rent, right? And it will automatically list itself available for rent it's using 100 and, uh, the 720 hours we did, and it set a price of 8x of the current multiplier for the Zealous hash rate here, and it looks like it's going to be 85.34 Clor is what we're going to be getting per day, and this is on a per day basis, not per week. This is per day, and you can see that um, I didn't I didn't enable that check mark to be able to manage the rig here in the Clore dashboard, right? I just wanted to show you what it kind of looks like when it when you don't tick the first and third boxes. Just remember, I like checking the first and third boxes. I never really check the second one because unless you want to be in efficiency mode and then essentially just be renting out to other miners, that's fine. Um, they, they do have a marketplace for that. So, But I just wanted to show what it looks like when you don't enable the first and third option where you're going to need to be able to essentially have to come in here and, and change your flight sheet every time when you click into your rig here, it'll say machine is managed by the Hive OS flight sheet, rental settings, automatic pricing can be modified only by the configuration of the flight sheet. So if you get this, this means you didn't do it right. You need to check the first and third options, right? Then uh, I'll show you my other rig here, little Timmy here. It has a little 4060 Ti in it. And I'm gonna show you this. This has the automatic pricing, but as you can see here, it doesn't have that error. So this way we're able to actually effectively change, you know, how much Clore we're gonna get. I want, um, let's just say I want, an, uh, I want an 8X. I can just click over here, change what I want, click apply settings, and then we'll refresh the page and it should change the amount of Clore. It might take a few minutes, but generally it does, it does change. So you can see here that my amount my amount did change. I went from a six to an eight x, and now I'm over at thirty point eight seven um, thirty point eight seven chlor per day per rent, right? 
So I just wanted to show you the differences if you don't enable the first and third option. If you don't enable those two options, then you won't be able to do this right here to where you can change your pricing all the time with your little multiplier down here, right? This is where you, you don't change the pricing in here. Don't do that. You want to change it down here with your multiplier. This way you keep your automatic pricing, right? You want to do it this way. So currently right now, my pricing is going to stay structured the way it is um, at this rate based upon this hash rate here on Zealous of on my 4090. So this is what it's generating for, um, for its profitability, right? Um, now, let me show you some other useful uh, tools that you guys, that we can use here. Um, I'll show you some other things you can install on your rig. Uh, so this way you could be able to maybe see what other people are running on there. So we're going to go over to my little Timmy rig. You can see it's not mining Zealous, even though I have it on because it's doing a workload right now, right? We're going to shell into little Timmy here and we're going to see exactly what's going on here in the back end. So the first thing we're going to want to do is do a sudo um, app. I'm sorry, apt uh, install uh, and VTOP, which this is going to let us see what things are going on in the GPU. And so you can just type NVTOP now and whoops, NVTOP. I don't know why I keep putting Y, NVTOP. And now we can go into the see what's going on in, this, in the GPU. Right now he's using 100% of the 4060 Ti. He's using 17 gigs. He's like pretty much the memory and the GPU are completely maxed out. And it's doing a QLI runner. And this is obviously his mining wallet address thing here. So you can see here that he's renting that. Um, and, you know, it's using about 93, 99 of the 160 watts that's available to the card. So you can come in here and you can see kind of what these guys are running, right? So we're going to do a control C to get out of this. Now, another thing you could do is, is you could do a sudo docker ps. And this way, you guys could see what dockers um, containers are actually running on here. You can see that the Chlor monitoring one is running. That's what Chlor uses to monitor your stuff. So don't, don't mess with that. And then you can see that they also run the Chlor AI high proxy, which is also something they run. So currently right now, the person who's actually renting the rig and doing work is this bottom container here. And this is the Ubuntu uh, Jupyter uh, container that's being ran right now. So that's, that's what that is. So we're gonna install one more tool. We're gonna do a sudo pip uh, install uh, bpytop and Instead of using app, we're using pip, which means we're using Python. Um, and it says, oh, we don't we don't have pip. So we're going to do a sudo app install uh, pip. And we're going to hit yes. And it's going to do a bunch of stuff, get a bunch of things. And there it goes. Okay, now we could do a sudo pip, not pop, pip install bpy top and there it goes it's really small package now we just type bpy top and then this is going to give us a really detailed breakout of like our cpu our ram our disks our free memory you know it's going to give us bandwidth it's going to give us upload download what um processes are running you know how the resources are being divvied up by the prices like it's or mine pool is what the container that he's running right now and it, it looks like it's some kind of a cpu miner as well it's like he's doing cpu mining as well on here so it's using cpu and gpu interesting he is pegging the crap out of my xeon right now so he's using all 12 cores and 24 threads on this right now he's just He's just pegging, he's just being mean. And then we'll do a control C and that's pretty much it for the install. There is a few little catches there that you might get tripped up on. I've had the Chlor installation work like probably, you know, half the amount of times really well. And sometimes you might have to do a little bit of troubleshooting, but that's what I've had to do, right? So I'll leave a link to a Google doc with some of these instructions for you guys to follow. And this way, you guys, if you guys do get tripped up, 
that you guys are able to essentially fix the problem that you guys are having. So hopefully this video was informative. Be sure to stay tuned because I'll be doing another video uh, within the next week or two. I'll probably do it next week, which is going to, or you know, maybe by the end of the week, is how to mine Aleo with Chlor Fleet, right? Because obviously Chlor is not, uh, I'm sorry, um, Aleo is not currently supported with Chlor Fleet because it's not natively supported in Hive, right? Because it needs a custom miner. You can't run two custom miners. So... Stay tuned for that content. All right, this is the money can giving you the most hashes, and I'll see you next time.